More than a century ago, two physiologists, Otto Frank and Ernest Starling, discover that as the heart gets filled up with more blood during diastole, it contracts harder and pumps out more blood during systole. Naturally, they came up with the Frank-Starling law to explain this relationship. To understand the relationship, let's zoom into the walls of the ventricles. The bulk of these walls is made up of short, branched cardiac muscle cells packed one next to the other. Zooming in further, if we look inside the muscle cells, we see bundles of myofibrils, or long chains of sarcomeres. The sarcomere is the smallest structure in the muscle that's capable of contracting, so it's considered the basic contractile unit of the muscle. The sarcomere has two Z discs that form its boundary, and an M line in the middle. Attached to the Z disc are thin filaments made of actin protein. These actin filaments have structural polarity, which means both ends of the filament look different. We can think of it like an arrow, with the pointed end being the minus end, pointing towards the M line, and the tail end being the plus end, attached to the Z disc. Just like an arrow, the actin filament can only move in one direction, the direction it's pointed at. Attached to the M line are the myosin filaments, which are thick bundles of myosin proteins with two globular heads. During a muscle contraction, the myosin heads grab onto the actin filaments and pull them towards the M line, which brings the two Z discs closer together. Overall, the amount of tension developed, or the force of muscle contraction during systole, depends on the number of myosin heads that bind to actin. And this number directly depends on the length of the overlapping section between actin and myosin filaments. The length of the overlapping section depends on the overall length of the sarcomere. And the length of the sarcomere depends on how much blood fills the ventricle during diastole, because that affects how stretched out the overall muscle wall and each sarcomere within it end up being. This relationship is known as the cardiac length tension relationship, and it can be shown by this graph, with the sarcomere length or the ventricular end diastolic volume on the x-axis, and the tension or pressure developed within the ventricle during their contraction or systole on the y-axis. So let's imagine that the ventricles are mostly empty, with almost no blood in them. This will mean that there's nothing stretching the muscles in the ventricular wall, so the length of the sarcomeres are really short. At this length, the two Z discs are pulled close to each other and there's not much room for further contraction. Furthermore, the actin filaments from each side of the sarcomere cross the M line and overlap. Since actin can be pulled only in one direction, towards the midline, Myosin has to attach and pull the actin filament with the right structural polarity, the one pointing in the same direction as the myosin pulls. So when the actin filaments overlap, myosin is prevented from binding to its own actin filament by the actin filament from the other side with the wrong polarity. As a result, very few myosin-actin attachments are made and the cells can contract only very weakly during systole. On the graph, we can see near the point of origin, the short length of myocardial fibers corresponds with a low contractile force. As the ventricles fill with more blood returning through the veins, their walls get more and more stretched, and that stretches out every single sarcomere in the muscle cells as well. This means that there's more space, and no actin overlapping, which allows more myosin heads to properly interact with actin, and as a result create more force, or tension, during contraction. Looking at the graph, this would make our curve move steadily upwards with increasing force as there's increasing volume. This stretching can go until it exceeds a maximal point, after which things start getting too stretched out. This means the Z-discs are so far apart from each other that there's only little overlap between actin and myosin filaments, and actin gets out of reach from the myosin. As a result, there's a decreased number of myosin heads that manage to attach to actin and pull it towards the M-line. This leads to a decreased force of contraction, so the curve starts falling off again. Now that we've seen the relationship between length of the sarcomeres and tension during contraction in systole, let's look at the Frank-Starling relationship. This can also be plotted onto a similar graph, with the ventricular end diastolic volume on the x-axis, 
and the stroke volume, which is the volume of blood pumped out by the ventricle with each heartbeat, on the y-axis. So at the start of the curve, near the bottom left-hand corner, we have a low end diastolic volume, meaning very little blood in the ventricle at the end of diastole. So sarcomeres are squeezed together with very few myosin heads binding to actin. This results in a weak contraction during systole and a low stroke volume. As the volume of blood returning to the ventricles increases, sarcomeres stretch, and there's more myosin actin binding, so a greater strength of contraction is achieved and stroke volume rises. That's true until the end diastolic volume becomes too high, and the myosin and actin get too far apart, which causes the amount of myosin and actin binding to decrease, which results in a weaker contraction, so the stroke volume falls off again. Keep in mind though that this curve reflects the heart's intrinsic ability to vary the strength of contraction based on the volume of blood that it's filled with. Within the body, there are plenty of extrinsic signals as well, like nerve or hormonal stimuli and medications. Some of these signals, like stimulation from the sympathetic nervous system or the medication digoxin, can have a positive inotropic effect on the heart. This means that at a given end diastolic volume, they increase the strength of contraction, moving the curve upwards and increasing the stroke volume. On the other hand, there are negative inotropic agents, like medications, like beta blockers, that decrease the strength of contraction, moving the curve downwards and decreasing stroke volume. All right, as a quick recap, the Frank-Starling relationship between end diastolic volume, contraction strength, and stroke volume states that the strength of ventricular contraction and the volume of blood ejected by the ventricle depends on the blood volume present in the ventricle at the end of diastole.